looking like somebody's hoochie mama. That's okay though, I look cute. I look cute in red. Red is a cute color on me. That's why I miss murder. Big blood. Big, okay, I'm not a gangster. I just like that. If you are watching this video, it is now most likely Monday because knowing me, I'm gonna say most likely, I'd be procrastinating. But <clears throat> if you know me, you know minions are me and Mr. Minions and Mr. Murder. You get, you get the point? Y'all get it? Anyway. <laughs> So here we are, episode two, representing for Talk of the Town, T-O-T-T. -T. I got the whole, can you see the pants? Hey, hey, hey. And on this leg, we got the T-O-T-T. -T. And then on the back of the hoodie, hopefully you guys can see it when I pop my collar. On the back, we work, we strive. Y'all can see that, right? We work, we strive. That's what we do over here at Talk of the Town. Yes, sir. That's what we do. We are also going to dig into a very interesting, uh, very interesting woman. Her name is Miyuki Ishikawa. And excuse me, this bitch right here, she was, uh, she was a little cuckoo. She was a little cuckoo. But thank you guys again so much for liking the um for subscribing liking for subscribing to the youtube thank you again for anyone who has shouted out i said this on my live earlier shout it out pigeon mail telephone little string with the cans however you done told somebody about ms for murder i appreciate you and the bottom is of my dark heart. No, I'm just kidding. My heart ain't that dark. My heart, my heart's red. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. And anyway, um, episode two, Miyuki Ishikawa. We're just gonna have a little conversation, have a little chitty chat about who this crazy broad was. Cause when I tell y'all the story of this bitch, you gonna be like, oh, oh, so again, thank you. Episode two. What up, what up? It's your girl, Sweet Becca. Ooh, today, you guys better strap on your snapbacks, strap on your wigs, strap on your two-piece, strap on your three-piece, whatever you got on, strap it on. Because this story is one of the most prolific ones that has ever been told in history but it's also one that isn't really discussed and there's not much on it online and in any sources that I was able to find it in um Miyuki Ishikawa let's just get right into it Miyuki Ishikawa was also known as the demon midwife we're just gonna very blatant her nickname was the demon midwife and I'm here to tell you guys why and it's very interesting to me that with the time period and the number of victims that she had um, I believe that the story definitely should have got gotten more attention um, I have definitely have done a good amount of research and from what I found um, about her early life, Miyuki, there's not much on it, um, but I was able to, you know, find out that, you know, she was born 1897. <laughs> um, she was born in 1897. <laughs> I'm laughing. Just because if I cut out the previous part, <laughs> you guys don't have to know why because I cut it out. But um, I was unable to really find much about her early life other than she was born in 1897. And um, she didn't have a huge family. The town that she was born in, Kinetomi, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, Kinetomi. 
it was a, a very small town in southern Japan, so there weren't that many people in that area, so she didn't have a huge family. Um, she, ooh, we're gonna work on our ums. This is, you know, test and trial. Episode two is also test and trial. I don't care. Every episode is test and trial because you get to get better after every one. Okay? Just a little bit of motivational speaking there. Anyway, back to the mystery. It's not even a mystery. We already know she's a demon midwife. Back to this crazy bitch. <laughs> so, she went to the University of Tokyo. Again, I wasn't really able to find much on that, but if she was born in 1897, it was likely sometime in like the 1920s, maybe like late 1919s is when she graduated from there. I don't really know when, um, if there was like an age for college back then, but that's just my guess. We're just going to go with that. Um, the very interesting part about all this is that she didn't have any kids either. So, to me, that I think, I don't know, for someone who didn't have kids, she didn't really have that personal connection. So, her crimes, or not even crimes because she didn't see them as crimes, the things that she did she didn't really have a heart she didn't really feel anything about it so that's just my take on that so let's get into the place of employment for miss ishikawa you might catch me calling her ishi here and there just because miyuki ishikawa it's it's not a hard name to say but i i, I like the the name ishi this, this this bitch Ishii has some issues, at least to say. Anyway, in the 1940s, she worked at the Kotobuki Maternity Hospital uh, as a midwife. And this was how she was able to have access to all of these children. You know, she was employed to take care of children, but instead <laughs> she murdered them. So that was a thing. Um, hmm. she used her title as well as, you know, some of the willingness of the families to, you know, entrust her in their care. Um, but we'll get more into that later. But something to note is around the same time, uh, Japan had surrendered in World War II, so between resources, the economy, just standard day-to-day -day, um, necessities just weren't a thing for anybody who was in poverty. So you have a huge family or a small family regardless of the size of the family, but a lot of the families weren't even that big. That is a huge bug. Oh my God, guys, there's a huge bug outside my window. Um. <laughs> anyway, Despite the size of the family, you know, some of these families just couldn't afford to take care of these kids. So it was either, you know, suffer and have the child suffer and have everyone else suffer or, you know, just leave them in the care of a demon midwife. But it was crazy just because around the same time, a lot of people were coming home from the war. So... Uh, you know, dudes was coming like home to their wife and it was like, hey, yo, baby, bend it over real quick. You know, let me see what that thing do. So they was getting it on. They was having mad babies. Like, to be exact, I found between 2.8 to 3 million babies in three years in Japan alone. Like, right around, like, the 1940s. I don't, I'm not great with statistics. I took a statistics, see, I can't even talk. I took a stats class in college and I hated it. So I'm pretty sure that number is a major number. Like it's huge. So, and on top of that, like abortion was just not a thing. So what were they to do? 
I'm not excusing it. However, like at that time, they literally had no other choice. Um, so a lot of these babies were intentionally neglected. And it was something like, okay, um, now she, she meaning Ishii, was getting hip. Like around this time, she was realizing, you know, I can make money off of this. I can definitely turn this into a hustle. This bitch really started to like take money. Oh, I, I don't, I mean, talking about God rest her soul. I, why was I about to say that? This bitch, mer- mm. don't rest her. Listen, this bitch need to rest in hell. Um, she started to, you know, blackmail people into giving her money. And on top of that, a lot of families weren't able to collect any benefits unless they had proof that their child was dead. So, um, Ishii was at the point where she was like, okay, well, I'm not giving you the death certificate until you pay up type shit. So I was just like, Lord Jesus girl you just got a lot going on but i mean anything for a hustle back then i guess um now around this time there were also other midwives that worked at the kotobuki hospital so no one else knew no one else noticed babies going missing no one else was like "Mm." where's that baby that came in like two weeks ago or where is this other bit like no one no one i don't know but again back then it was just not a thing um oh i didn't even talk about her husband um i'm gonna probably mess up the pronunciation of his name but takashita ishikawa takashita we gonna call him taki (laughs) taki chip taki chip um so basically Ishii and Taki Ishii started to get um old boy involved so old boy you know was assisting with um the death certificates and everything and was helping this doctor that they had kind of recruited as well and the doctor basically was helping them kill the babies um, store the babies and um, assist with the death certificates as well. Like, it's just, it's kind of beyond me. And I wasn't really able, I mean, there was, there were some dates online, but I was able to like kind of find between like the 1940s and the 1950s is when, um, you know, between the time that she was employed and the time that she was caught. So basically within 10 years, she either was um, asked to kill or intentionally killed between 100 and 150 babies. That's a lot of babies. And yeah, there were a lot of babies born. Yeah, there were a lot of people who couldn't take care of them, but Babies don't deserve to be, like, just, you know, put to the side just because y'all can't... Listen, figure it out. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, so, January 12th, 1948, the Wasita police officers, or I'm pretty sure it was, like, maybe three or four of them. Again, that also varied online. They quote unquote accidentally found the bodies of five babies and it was something like, um, so between, you know, her, oh, she was also, you know, eventually appointed as the director of this hospital. So between being the director, like she definitely had mad connects. So there's no way that these officers, I feel like people either started to you know either find out and did their own investigations like that's actually normal or people were starting to feel guilty like that's a lot of like babies to be like kind of hiding so um yeah so on january 12 1948 these officers found you know these babies and this was just like the start of them finding all of these you know deceased children 
between um, that week from what I also found online and like my sources, Maria Chards, um, the Cultura Collective, she basically called the whole thing like an open secret just cause I don't think anyone should be openly admitting, yeah, I'm the director of this midwife hospital and I assisted in murdering and neglecting and abusing all of these babies and I also took money for it. <laughs> You know, so it's it's just one of those things that shouldn't have slid for as long as it did. But at the time of her arrest, how could someone who was in charge of all of these children um, kill all these babies? But, you know, when the trial finally came around, which was within this 10 years they considered her crimes crimes of omission and that's basically they basically said you didn't do your job you didn't take care of these children like you were supposed to so that's your crime not murder not abuse not neglect <laughs> like no you just didn't do your job of all these babies and listen i i don't know what kind of um what kind of coercion what kind of whatever but um i don't know bitch you would have had to have some some little bit more if you were my court they basically there's the term that was used to label this neglect and this this kind of discarding of babies they called it mabuki so this was prominent in the northeast and some of like the southwestern southwestern let me <clears throat> in some areas of japan not others this practice was labeled as such just because it was that normal people just couldn't afford to take care of their babies and it was also spiritual it was a very spiritual practice because once midwives were would deliver the babies and they would ask the mothers whether they wanted to keep or um get rid of and if they got rid of the baby there were like different methods of discarding the baby um but in most traditions they would commonly wrap the baby in cloth and put the baby in the water just because that signaled the baby's return to the spiritual world and sometimes they even buried the babies under the house just as a sign that the baby would come back which is very interesting to me as well um i don't know that huh, again i'm 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 not there i'm not i'm I'm in 2022. <laughs> so it, the whole thing just played out as you were a very terrible woman. What you did was very bad. Yes. However, your crime, quote unquote, wasn't anything that was criminal. It was more you didn't do your job which is um yeah anyway um in total the couple only received a total of eight years and Miyuki served four and her husband only served two so in total they only served six years again very odd to me but um, the thing that I, I, I couldn't seem to figure out when I was doing my research about this woman is who else was involved? Like, because from what I found, it was Miyuki, it was, it was Ishii, Taki, this doctor, and maybe a couple of midwives. Like, I mean, I'm sure the hospital had a good amount of midwives, but how many of them would be willing to do that and 
how many are willing to keep their mouth shut like because there were definitely had to have been people who knew who weren't actually involved with the crimes but um oh my god that is a huge mob <laughs> anyway um yeah like who else was involved what what high rollers knew about these crimes someone else had to have known because again a lot of what i found is yeah this woman killed a bunch of babies too bad so sad let's move on with our lives no like a hundred like between 100 and 200 babies like that's a lot of babies to just kind of just lose and say oh well on to the next so i don't know it's it's very interesting to me that it's kind of like a pick and choose game but just like a self-reflection question about this case you know to think about like who who else could have been involved in this guys like who 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 was she close with like in regards to like authority like law or whoever um so yeah um that is the story of Miyuki Ishikawa it says she died May 30th 1987 so not too long ago not too long ago she died um and that huh to me, she should have died a long time ago by death, by someone fucking her up in prison, by whatever. But she was able to just kind of live her life afterwards. So. Well, alrighty then. Enough of me being weird. <laughs> um, thank you guys for tuning in to episode two. I hope you enjoyed the story of Miyuki Ishikawa. Plenty more of these creepy, sadistic murderers um that's what we're here for we're here for the murder mysteries we're here for the crime stories and coming up pretty soon we're also going to be here for the cosplay so be on the lookout for the next episode that'll be dropping um sooner than you think a uh, huge huge shout out to talk of the town huge shout out to jizzy huge shout out to sweet chaos and anyone who supported the team talk of the town music be on the lookout for talk of the town productions as well just a whole lot going for the team it's gonna be a a lit summer so make sure you guys like subscribe tune in all that fun stuff and i'll see you guys on mifm soon peace